And over to you, Sherpa. Good morning, um, brothers and sisters. Let me greet everybody and wish you a very happy Mission Monday. And, and here in South Africa, it is a public holiday because of voting day. So it is an opportunity really um, for each and every one of us to actually go out um, and, and serve, go out on, on, on a mission. And um, once again, we thank God for the gift of yet another day, another opportunity to start over another opportunity. Uh, is, it, is it Jeremiah who says his mercies are new every day? And so each day that we get is an opportunity to draw closer to God than we were yesterday. It's an opportunity to love him more um, than we did yesterday. It's also an opportunity to do better today than we did yesterday. So every single day that he gives us breath is a day that we ought to be thankful for. And we also thank him for the opportunity once more to approach the throne of mercy with high expectation that indeed even today um, we will not walk away empty handed. Continuing with the theme um, that we are talking about this week, the theme of faith um, and the theme um, where we are asking God to, to renew our faith. Really, we, we are asking, we are on a reboot uh, project uh, this week. Um, so we're continuing with that theme and our text of consideration therefore this morning is found in the book of Numbers, in the book of Numbers chapter 13 and, and chapter 14. And for those, when you have time later today to actually read the, the whole story, um, and, and it's two chapters, so I will not be able to go through each, uh, read both chapters, but I'm just going to take a couple of points um, for our consideration, some lessons that I have picked up um, from that story. Um, and then you can go and read the rest of it yourself. Like I said, it's it's then Numbers chapter 13 and Numbers chapter 14. Contextually, um, the children of Israel, like, like we are, they are on the verge of the promised land. They have been traveling with God, a, a journey that took longer than it should have, but they are now on the verge of the promised land. And listen to verse one um, of, of, of chapter 13. And the Lord spoke to Moses. And I, I want you to take note of that. The Lord himself, God spoke. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, everyone a leader among them. So these gentlemen that are being said are leaders in their, in their tribes, but I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to follow up on the fact that they are leaders, but it may come up some, some time. But I want you to pick up something here, that this is a done deal as far as God is concerned. In other words, the Lord has spoken, I am giving you the land. The land is yours. I'm simply sending you out there to go and examine it and see for yourselves what it looks like. So even as we proceed, I want to ask you something. Is there something in your life that God has pronounced? God has given it to you. God has given it to you. It is yours. God has spoken. I'm giving you this land. I'm giving you this. I'm giving you that. But you are still sitting here waiting, maybe even praying for that which God has already given and that's the kind of faith we're talking about here. Anyway, so Moses goes um, to, as God has instructed him, he goes and chooses um, the 10 spies, each from, from the tribes. And, and then Moses, the Bible says in, in, in verse uh, three, that Moses sent them according to the command of the Lord. Now, I'm highlighting that to say that Moses did indeed tell them what God has also said to them. So according to God, this is what you need to do. The Lord has given us the land, but the Lord is sending us out there to go and view, to see what the land is looking like. Otherwise, it's a done deal. So you are not going there to find out whether or not we can get the land. We have the land, but you are going out there to find out what the land looks like, sort of so that you can prepare anyway. And so the rest of chapter three or the most part of chapter three is then telling us about who the people are from verse four to verse 16, giving us some of the names um, of the 10 spies. But of course, among them, we, we highlight Joshua um, and, and Caleb. 
and and then the 17 to 25 then details how what basically then Moses tells the people what to look for so he gives that it goes a little bit in depth in terms of what to look for so see what the land is like um, see what the people who dwell uh, uh, look like, whether they are strong or they are uh, they're weak, whether they are few or they are many. Look at the land itself. Is it a good land or a bad land? Look at the cities. Look at the land. Is it rich or is it poor? Look at the forests. And we believe that there are grapes there. So if you can please bring some. So the guys go. So the rest of the chapter goes and tells us that they went. It tells us the route that they took. And this was a 40-day journey. They're going there and they return. Anyway. They then come back. Like I said, I'm not going to be able to go into that. So the spies come back. Now, remember what was the mandate? The land you have been given. You are going there to tell us what the land is like. Otherwise, God has given us the land. And so upon their return, it is when they come back that the faith of all the 10 spies is then put on a scale, so to speak. It is when upon their return that their faith is weighed. And sadly, for some of them, their faith is found wanting. Listen to, to, to what they say um, in response. And, 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 and this is something I want um, uh, to highlight to you, brothers and sisters. God sent out 10 people to spy out the land that he has been given to the whole nation of Israel. Out of the 10, eight, come back with a report of fear and two come back with a report of faith and so if as we are talking this week about faith as we are praying to God asking him to increase our faith as we are praying to God praying for holistic faith I want to warn you that this whole issue of faith is not a majority business 80 percent of the, the so-called children of Israel, 80% often of believers do not possess the true and holistic faith. It looks like if you're going to wait for the rest of us to follow, for you to live out your faith fully, you may wait forever. If you're going to wait for the entire majority, if you're going to wait for your whole family, if you're going to wait for all your friends, for God to be able to play out what he has put in your heart years ago, you may wait forever. Two out of ten come back with a report of faith. Eight out of 10 come back with negativity. And you can go through the entire Bible. You know, if you go on the sea um, um, where there was a storm, there were 12 disciples, but only one, one in 12 were, was able to experience what it is like to walk on water. So the kind of faith that we are praying for, my brothers and my sisters here, is not one that we are going to find in the majority. It is going to have to be an individual business. And that is what we are here to do. We are here as individuals. We may sit together as a group. But what is God saying to you as a person? What is God saying to you as a person? Then we can go to families and communities and churches, et cetera, et cetera. But all of those entities are made up of individuals. And so this is an individual business. Eight out of 10 come back and say, we went to see the land. It truly flows with milk and honey. So at least they, they are able to tell what the land looked like. But in no time, they change. Verse 28, they say, nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. Nevertheless, the, the cities are fortified. The cities are fortified and they are very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anna. So that's how they go over. They go on to talk about, they, they talk about the land, the, a little bit about the land, but they spend more time on the cities and they spend more time on the people. But even as they spend more time talking on the people, they, they highlight the scary parts of the people. And of course, this causes panic. But I am so glad for Caleb, who in the midst of this, because he realizes now that people are panicking, people are scared. He jumps up. He does not even go and describe the city anymore. He just stands up with a short report of, of faith where he says, in spite of what they're saying, let us go up at once and take possession for we are able to overcome it. In other words, he does not even dispute any of what is being said. He doesn't say the people are not big, the city are not fortified. He says, remember guys, our God has given us the land. This is a done deal here. We are not going out there to find out whether or not the people are big or they're not big. We were just going out there to examine the place. We examine it. Yes, there, there is. It, it looks like the kind of place that we want. Yes, the people out there are big, but remember it's a done deal. 
God has given us the land, so let us go. We are able to overcome it. But before he even finishes that sentence, the other eight come back vehemently to contradict him. Now, I want you to take note of how they, they speak. They say, verse 31, we are not able. These, these are the same people that went. We are not able to go up there um, against those people for they are stronger than we. And they continue to describe these people. They talk about the descendants of Anak. They talk about how these people are giants. Verse 33, they say, in fact, they, we saw what we saw there are giants, the descendants of Anak. And we, we are like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were. In their, in their eyes as well. Listen now, listen to the words that they use. So the primary focus of the eight spies was on we and on they. And let me tell you, my friend, as far as we are concerned, they say, they are too big. We are too small. They are too big. We were like grasshoppers in our own eyes. End of the story. But the question is, what does God say in this situation? What does God say in this situation? Basically, as they highlight their weaknesses, as they highlight the strength of the other people, they left God completely out of the question. I want to ask you this morning, as we go into this new week, what are the situations? What are the projects? What are the challenging opportunities that God has placed in your heart that you are looking at the opportunities, the people there, and well as looking yourself, instead of rolling up your sleeves and going out there and doing as God has done. So in highlighting us and highlighting them, we are actually taking God out of the equation. And yet it is God himself who has put us um, to us, already confirmed this. I have given you the land. I have given you the business. I have given you the children. I have given you the home. I have given you the marriage. I have given you the community. I have, give, I have already given you all of these things. But as long as you focus on you, as long as you focus on them, you are not going to move. A number of us are stuck in the same place that God pronounced five years ago. God finished the business that you're still stuck on. And the reason you are stuck is not because God is not powerful. The reason that you're stuck is not because the doors are not open. The reason you're stuck is because you are focusing on we, on I, and on them. But how about focusing on God? And so I, as I close this morning, it appears to me that true faith, true faith, life-changing faith has got very little to do with what I see has got very little to do with what they see, has got very little to do with what I say and what they say. It has got everything to do with what God says and what God sees and how God sees. Faith has everything to do with the glasses with which you and I, my friend, utilize to see the world. And so as we pray this morning, I, I was, I've been saying this to God, Lord, can you give me your eyes in this situation? Can you give me your perspective in this situation? And like Joshua and like Caleb, we may be in the minority, but I wish to see things the way that you see things. And so as we pray, brothers and sisters, this week, we are praying for holistic faith. We are praying for the kind of faith that these guys displayed in spite of how scary the situation looked. They remembered that we can't look at this with our own eyes. We can't go in this from our own perspective. We've got to go as God goes in. So the spies, the eight spies, they went into this with their own glasses. They went into this with the glasses by which other people see them. My friend, if you look at how others see you, if you look at how others see you, you will never do anything. You will always ever feel like the grasshopper that they see you as. Listen to how they speak. They say they were giants. So that's how we see them. We see them as big. Secondly, they say because they were giants, we thought that they saw us as giants. And so we were giants in our own eyes. We, we were, we were, we were, what's the word? So we were spies in our own eyes. Could it be that you are sitting here seeing yourself as tiny? Not because God. God sees you as tiny. When God looks at you, he says, mighty warrior, mighty warrior. But because you are looking at yourself through the glasses of other people, you are seeing yourself as a grasshopper, sitting there intimidated. And yet God says to you, I have given you the land. You have already overcome. And so this morning, as we go out into the prayer room, can I tell you something, my friends? And I'll speak in the context of the bigger promised land, heaven. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. God has given us the land. But as we pray this morning, 
as we pray this morning, I ask that we take the report of faith as given by Caleb, as given by Joshua. We may be in the minority, but with God on our side, we are the majority. We are the majority. Listen to how um, Caleb gives his report. He, he says, the land we passed is, is indeed is exceedingly good. And then he says, if the Lord is pleased with us. So look at the report. The, the eight spies, they say, we and they. Caleb says, the Lord and the land. In other words, what did God, God send us to, to, to spy the land? The land is good. And as far as we are concerned, if God says it, then it's done. Let's go. We will conquer the land. So as I close, I ask that we pray in the, in the, in the, in the, in the book, Steps to Christ, I'll, I'll keep coming back to this. I love this book. God says, prayer does not bring God down to us. This is Ellen White. It brings us up to the level of God. And so when God picks us up to his level, he replaces our view. He replaces our perspective. He replaces our glasses with his glasses. So when we rise up to the level of God, we see things as God sees things. We see our challenges as God sees our challenges. We see opportunities as God sees them. We see the giants as God sees the giants. And we see no giants because we are looking at people from the eyes and from the perspective of God. But most importantly, we see others as God sees them. So, so the kind of faith we are praying for, we are asking, I'm asking God, can you give me your glasses, your eyes, with which I see my spouse, with which I see my children, with which I see my boss. There I say, when we rise up on the wings of prayer, God gives us the perspectives with which he sees what our so-called enemies, we see them as God sees them. And because we see them as God sees them, we deal with them as God deals with them. And lastly, when we take the perspective of God, when we look at things as God sees them, when we have the kind of faith that looks at people as God sees them, we see ourselves as God sees us. We see ourselves as God sees us. If you look at yourself from the vantage point of humanity, you will never do anything. We are nothing. We are indeed like grasshoppers. But when we see ourselves as God sees us, God sees a mighty warrior in each and every one of you. And so, like it says in my language, go in the pe call. So I pray this morning, Lord, will you give me that, that faith through which I will see, through which I'll be able to view situations, not as me, but as God in me, through which I will not see them, through which I will not see they, through which I will see only as you see them and therefore act as if, as, as though um, act in the manner in which you act. Imagine the kind of world that we would live in. Imagine the kind of impact we would have if we would have the same perspective as Jesus. It is found in Christ Jesus. It is found in the power of the Holy Spirit. Father God, thank you once again this morning for your word. And we are simply asking for one thing. Simply asking for one thing. Take your place in our lives. Take your place in our hearts. Take your place in our minds and take over the way in which we view the world, the way in which we view each other, the way in which we view your children, and the way in which we view situations. And because if that is changed, it will also change the manner in which we act. And if we act the way you would act, Lord, we would change the world and we would change our own selves. We ask all this in your wonderful name. Amen.